welcome, welcome. I would like to welcome you to yet another episode of the Unpopular Podcast. This is the man, the myth, the NFL GM, and the NFL commissioner for this episode, Jalen Hunter. And before we start, if you would do me a favor, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please subscribe to wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching. It would definitely mean a lot to me. I'm trying to get to a, a, what 1,000 subscribers by my birthday, and uh, it would definitely mean a lot. But like I said, the draft is tomorrow, and I wanted to do my mock draft. Now, no, <laughs> I'm not doing all, what, seven, eight rounds of the draft. That's just not happening. Um, I'm going to do the first round. And... While doing this draft, this this year is is a lot different from this. De- Let me say this: this year is different from a lot of other years. This year, you have a lot of high end quarterbacks. This year, you have a lot of offensive linemen that are really good, and you have a lot of wide receivers that are really good. Now, while wide receivers aren't really needed that much, there are a couple teams that most definitely need some wide receivers that are that you can address, not just in the first round but later in the draft. And, of course, the big news is, you know, who's going to go one through, well, pretty much two through five. And we're going to get into it. Like I said, this is my mock draft, the Unpopular Podcast mock draft. I'm not going to do no trades because that's – the draft is unpredictable, of course, but trades are even more predictable. So I'm not going to do any trades. I'm not going to say, you know, A is going to trade with B. I'm not going to do all that. I'm just going to do whatever the, the order is in the draft right now. For tomorrow is what I'm going to do. And we'll start. First and foremost, like I said, this this draft is pretty big when it comes to quarterbacks. And I say that because there's about five or six quarterbacks that can be or have the potential to be franchise changers or have the potential to be first-round picks. Now, it's also big for this draft because if you look down the road, there's not a lot of, at least the next few years, there's not a lot of great NFL draft talent that will be coming into the draft at the quarterback position. So this is one of the last years in, in the foreseeable future where the, the the NFL talent, as far as the quarterback position, will be there. And we're going to start with the first round, first overall pick, which is the Jag, Jacksonville Jaguars. There's no question who's going – Ever since Trevor Lawrence came into the league or came into college, they've been saying he's the number one. He's going to be number one overall pick. Uh, he's pretty much – they're pretty much putting him on the same level as Peyton Manning as as terms of, you know, draft value, draft stock. Uh, they're pretty much putting him on the same level as Peyton Manning, uh, Andrew Luck. We pretty much know – like. We pretty much know who's going to be number one. So the Jaguars are going to pick Trevor Lawrence. Um, I think I think he has uh, his. I mean, he is the best player in the draft as far as quarterback position. And I understand people are going to look at what happened last year with when they went up against Ohio State. But he's only lost what two two or three games his entire collegiate career. In one of those games, he didn't even play. So it's it's pretty much a no brainer who's going to go number one, and that is Trevor Lawrence to the Jacks. Number two, you have the Jets. Now, the Jets the Jets have some – I'm not going to say they have some problems, but the Jets, they they just traded away uh, Sam Darnold, so you know that they're in the, they're in the I guess, ballpark for a quarterback. Now, while Trevor Lawrence is not going to be on the board, all that we're hearing is pretty much going to be Zach Wilson out of BYU. Now, Zach Wilson – he is a type of quarterback. I don't know if he's a franchise quarterback, and I don't know if he is. I don't think he's NFL ready as far as like he's gonna day one. He's gonna be good day one. I don't. I don't think though. But I think that he's a mobile quarterback who has a cannon of an arm. I mean, we saw at BYU how good he was. You know, I, I just think that. I think that it. it it's pretty much a no. He, he's pretty much going. He's pretty much going number one. I mean, he has. He, it, psh, I, I just the man threw thirty three touchdowns to three interceptions like that, and 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 this and honestly, BYU. Now I will say one one cause of concern is when they played up against top tier teams, they didn't really win that much. But I could also say that you have to look at the talent that was around him. And he didn't have that much talent around him and still had 33 touchdowns and three interceptions. So 
I have Zach Wilson going number two to the Jets. And honestly, this the you it has to go to the Jets, seeing as though you just trade away Sam Darnold. If you would have kept Sam Darnold, I would have said you probably want to address the offensive line first, but because you let him go and, and, and he went to the Panthers, which is also going to affect the Panthers pick, uh, I have Zach Wilson going number two. Number three is the biggest one, the 49ers. And I say the biggest because all we've heard is who's going to go to the 49ers. First of all, the 49ers traded up. They traded up to get him or trade up to get to the third pick. And usually you don't trade up if you're not getting a quarterback. Now, this this has a lot. I mean, this this pick has a lot of stipulation, not only on the present for the 49ers, but the future, because you still have Jimmy G. I don't know if you're going to trade him. I don't know what's going on or what's going to happen there. But you're obviously saying and all we've heard is you're going to draft a quarterback, a quarterback, a quarterback. So you're obviously saying that you don't have faith in Jimmy G moving forward. The same Jimmy G that got you to the Super Bowl. Now, I know it was the defense and everything that that was a, a huge part of that. But what you're pretty much saying is Jimmy G can't get you to the promised land. Now, Jimmy G has has dealt with a lot of injuries. So I understand that. And I understand, you know, I, I guess due to, you know, what happened in the Super Bowl, the reason why they lost and stuff like that. I get why Kyle Shanahan might not want or might want to move in a different direction from Jimmy G. So who do they pick? We've heard Mac Jones. We've heard uh, Trey Lance. We've heard Justin Fields. We've heard a lot of people. But I think that it, it's probably going to be Mac Jones. Now, I am, I'm not one of the people that think that Mac Jones is just a bona fide quarterback. I do think that when you have the NFL talent around him, both on the offensive line and the wide receiver core, it's going to be easy to look good. Now, again, I'm not saying he's not talented. I just don't know if he's third overall pick type talented. But I think that, I mean, a lot of a lot of reports have come out pretty much saying that it's going to be Mac Jones. And I do think that Mac Jones is – one thing I, I do think is this. Mac Jones might be the, the outside of Trevor Lawrence, might be the only quarterback in this draft that can win now. Now, when I say win now, I don't know if he, I don't think he's Super Bowl talented, but I do think that he his skill set as far as his reads, uh, his arm strength, his ability to 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 get receivers open. I think that he's the most ready now quarterback outside of Trevor Lawrence. Um, and I think that's why they kind of want I don't think Kyle Shanahan is looking in the future about this, even though he will be a rookie. I think they're looking at the, this is a win now situation because if they were looking at the future, I don't think they would have got off or I don't think they're going to get off Jimmy G. So I have Mac Jones going to the 49ers. Now we have the Falcons pick. Now, again, I said that I'm not doing any trades or anything, but the Falcons pick at four is really interesting. Uh, a lot of people have them on draft day, at least trading this pick because they don't really, I mean, there's a lot of people that could use this for fourth overall pick to get a quarterback or to get a game changing defensive player. But look at, I mean, you can look at maybe the Patriots try to go up there, look at uh, maybe Dallas to get to the fourth pick. I don't know, but I do. Th I'm just going to going on what's happening right now. Right now, the Falcons have the first, I mean, the fourth overall pick. Now, a lot of people are saying that they should pick a quarterback. We know Matt Ryan, he's he's been on decline ever since the Super Bowl uh, collapse that they had. But I will look at it and say this. I'm not going to put it as much on Matt Ryan as I'm going to put it on the poor coaching decisions. Uh, the defense has been god-awful. And a lot of players, I mean, his his running back core has been has been inconsistent to say the least. Uh, his wide receiver core outside of Calvin Ridley has been inconsistent as far as Julio Jones has been injured a lot. I don't even know. I mean, their tight end position, I, I mean, Hayden Hurst ain't really been it. So I don't think that you need – I don't think the Falcons need to get a quarterback. I think that they should stick with Matt Ryan. I think that they should get Julio Jones healthy. If they don't feel Julio Jones is in their best position, you, you can trade Julio Jones to get it. I mean, there's – I just said before – this is a this this draft has a litany of wide receivers that you can get. Like this 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 draft is wide receiver deep, 
offensive line deep and top heavy with quarterbacks, but it's definitely deep as far as those positions. So who should the Falcons pick? When we look at the Falcons last year, honestly, their offense wasn't the problem. Their defense was God awful. Like their defense was horrible. As far as the linebacker position, the defensive line, especially the cornerbacks and the safety, it, their defense was just horrible. And at this point, I would get the best defensive player in the draft at that point. I, it doesn't matter. No, get the best for the Falcons, get the best defensive player. And, and for me, I think that you should go with Michael Parsons. Now, I understand he sat out last year for Penn State, but Michael, pa- Michael Parsons – is the best linebacker in the draft by a country mile. I I think that you need he's kind of like a Devin White uh that plays for Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's kind of like that and the Falcons need somebody to start with t- to transform that defense. Uh it's it just it just hasn't been good. Their defense even with Dan Quinn who was supposed to be a defensive guru, even with Dan Quinn they've been they've been god awful defensively. So I think that With the fourth pick, the Falcons should go with the best defensive player, and that, in my opinion, is Michael Parsons, the linebacker out of Penn State. The Bengals. Now, before – the Bengals at five, by the way. Before Joe Burrow got hurt, I would say the Bengals need to address the defense. Their defense is still not good. I mean, you have really good receivers. They're really young receivers. But you you have Higgins um, and a couple of a couple of pieces, but their defense is still awful. But that was before Joe Burrow got hurt. Joe Burrow getting hurt really shined the light that they need offensive an offensive line help that can protect Joe Burrow because Joe Burrow, as we've seen when he was healthy, is good enough to be a franchise player. It's just you need to keep him safe. And especially coming off a, a horrific a leg injury, you need to sure up the offensive line to be safe for him. And because of that, I have the Bengals choosing Panay Soul, the old lineman out of Oregon. Again, another player that sat out last year, but he's still he's bigger than almost everybody, and he does things that we don't see a lineman do. His speed is on another level as for a lineman and for a person that big. I mean, Panay Soul is 330 pounds and and run and is a <laughs> is big, quick, and athletic, and you don't really see that from a lineman. And I think that, like I said, if Joe Burrow didn't get hurt, I think that the the Bengals would probably go with a defensive player at this position or at this pick, which is fifth. But because Joe Burrow got hurt, and you want to protect that asset at all cost. I got them picking Panay Sewell, who, in my opinion, is the best offensive lineman in the draft. I have him going fifth. We get to sixth. Now, the sixth is the Dolphins. You have people on two sides of the fence. You have people that says, you know, we should give up on Tua, Tua go for a quarterback. Um, there's some people in the media that think that, you know, Tua is just isn't the guy and they need to adjust the quarterback position or try to trade maybe for Deshaun Watson. Who knows? Uh, and that's another cloud, I guess you can say, that kind of lingers over this draft. Is anybody going to make a play or is Houston going to make a play to trade with somebody to get off of Deshaun Watson? Um, but again, I'm not doing no trades. So I don't know. But I think that. There's another. There's other people on the other side of the fence saying, you know, this was Tua's first year. Give him some time, you know, and you need to get pieces around him. While the Dolphins were really good last year, they're still in a rebuild mode. If you really look, they didn't really. They, I think they only beat like one playoff team. Now they beat the teams that they were supposed to beat, but they only beat like one playoff team, and that was like the Rams. I think. Uh, I think that. I think you stick with Tua. I mean, I think you see his development. I think you, uh, I think you, you ride him to the wheels fall off. Now, again, I also understand. I did start off by saying this draft is really rich in quarterback, and at six, you can get a lot. You can get a, you can get a, you can get a Trey Lance. You can get a, um, you can get a Justin Fields. There's a lot of people that you can get for this pick, but 
I am on the side to stick with Tua. So who would you get? To me, you want to get someone that's explosive. You want to get someone that can help Tua, and you want to get someone that can make big plays. So you get a wide receiver. And for me, I will go with the best wide receiver, in my opinion, in this draft, and that's Jamar Chase out of LSU. Yet another player who sat out last year. But Jamar Chase, people, people don't remember. If you don't remember, Jamar Chase is a big receiver. Um, it, it, he's not the fastest when it comes to speed, but he is a big receiver that can – make big plays and he's a big reason why Joe Burrow and the uh LSU the the year they had like the historic team he's a big reason for that and I think that getting a top notch or a top like the best receiver in the draft in my opinion will just do wonders for not only the Dolphins who are still in a rebuild by the way but will help their young asset in quarterback which is Tua so I have Jamar Chase going six with the Dolphins you have number seven, the Lions. Now, the Lions need a lot, man. The Lions, they need offensive line work. They need defensive line. They need cornerbacks. They need wide receivers. They need tight. They need a lot of things. And at this point, you just get Jared Goff and in a trade with or for Matthew Stafford. You get Jared Goff, and you need to – Get people around him. Now, at this position, you can get, again, because you need so much, in my opinion, you get the best best player at this position that isn't quarterback because you just got Jared, Jared Goff. You don't want to mess that up with drafting a quarterback. The the same draft, I mean, you, you don't want to mess that up with drafting a quarterback. So, at this, at this jump, the Lions, to me, you should just pick the best player available. And the best the best play available that also helps your team. I think that they choose Kyle Pitts out of Florida. I understand he's a tight end, but his his he he reminds me of a Darren Waller, which means that while you are a tight end, he has wide receiver capabilities and wide receiver talents. He's quick, he's big, he can catch over people, he runs incredible routes. He is a wide receiver in a tight end's body. And while Again, the Lions have a lot of – they need a lot of work at a lot of places. I do think that getting t- Kyle Pitts helps not only the team, but it helps Jared Goff have a number one option. So I have Kyle Pitts going seventh with to the, pay, to the Lions. The Panthers – I said this uh, with the Jets. The Panthers signed, uh, traded to get Sam Darnold, and I think that really changed – uh, how they approach the draft. I think that the last thing you want to do, you 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 trade for Sam Darnold and give up what you gave up because you think that Sam Darnold can be an immediate piece and a piece going down the road. You pretty much saying, you know, you don't trust Teddy Bridgewater and you're you're pretty much saying Sam Darnold is the guy. So what you want to do is you want to protect that asset. Uh, if you didn't, if you did not trade for him, I would think, you know, you might want to go defense or maybe draft a quarterback, but because you have Sam Darnold at eight, I have the Panthers going with the offensive line because the, the, the problem that plagued one of the problems that plagued the jets with Sam Darnold is they had an awful offensive line. And while the offensive line is really good for the Panthers, there are still things that you need to share up and, I think that the Panthers take Rashawn Slater out of Northwestern. He's a big dude. He's the he's the second ranked offensive lineman behind Panay Sewell. And I just think that I think because you get Sam Darnold, you want to protect him at all costs. Not to mention you still have Christian McCaffrey. He's really good. You have, you know, uh Robbie Anderson, you have DJ Moore, so you don't really need to address the tight I mean the wide receiver position. You could address the tight end position, but again, if Kyle Pitts was still there, I think you might want to go with him, but he's not. So I think that you need to and should protect Desha- I mean, should protect uh Sam Darnold, and that's why I have Rashawn Slater. Not to mention, I did say that this is a big draft this is a deep draft when it comes to defensive players as well. So I think in the you know round two on I think that the Panthers can address the defense, which isn't that bad, but does have some holes. But again, 
I would protect the quarterback, seeing as though you just got him on. And the reason, one reason why he was so bad in a lot of people's opinion in the with the Jets is because they didn't have protection in the line. So I have uh, the Panthers picking Rayshon Slater. Number nine, I have the Broncos. Now, the Broncos have a quarterback in Drew Locke, but pretty much it's out that they might be out on Drew Locke. Drew Locke, I think, last year had the worst uh, QB presented, or percentage, uh, worst passing percentage, and, and they're, I think they're pretty much looking to move on from Drew Locke. And I think... The pan, I think the Broncos at nine are going to tra- choose Trey Lance. I think that Trey Lance, a lot of people are saying that he has a skill set to go number two. It's just the Jets are so locked in as, to Zach Wilson. You know, Trey Lance out of North Dakota State, while he only played like one game last year, which is another reason why I think his draft stock is going to just decline just a little bit. He's a big, He's a big quarterback. He's a mobile quarterback, and he has an arm. I think his accuracy needs to be a little better. But he still has all the intangibles to be a really good quarterback. And I think that the Broncos are looking at Trey Lance. I think that they look at Trey Lance and think to themselves, well, Trey Lance is better than Drew Locke right now. And if he falls to them, I think that he's going to go with Trey Lance. So I have the Broncos going with Trey Lance. Um, Not to mention, you have Jared Judy. uh, When Sutton comes back from injury, you have him. So you you have pieces uh, that can really have no offense when he comes back. It's just you need, you know, you, you need uh, a quarterback that can get it there. And as we've seen, at least the last what few years, you know, uh, Drew Locke just hasn't been that person. So I have Trey Lance going nine to the Broncos. Now you have Dallas number 10, and this is a funny pick. I think it's a funny pick because of Jerry Jones. You know, Jerry Jones has come out and said, you know, he wants Kyle Pitts, uh, even though they don't need it. Like, Jerry Jones is, you know, the 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 GM, the spokesman, the owner. He He's pretty much the end-all, be-all when it comes to Dallas. But we need to dress. I understand that Jerry Jones, you know, likes to show time. And he remembers with Michael Irving. He remembers when they had Emmitt Smith and Dion and, and, and big-name players, which is why he's so fascinated with Kyle Pitts. But what do the Dallas Cowboys need? The Dallas Cowboys was a bottom five defense all last year. Their defense was god awful. Even if you look at the games they won before Dak Prescott got hurt, they were giving up 49, 50 point games to like the Browns and, and Atlanta Falcons. Like they, it just, they were bad defensively. And, you know, at that point, you have to address that defense. I understand there's some players that are box office that you can trade up to get or could fall to you, but you have to address the defense. And I had Michael Parsons going fourth to the Falcons because they needed to address their defense as well. So at 10, to me, you have to get the best available defensive player, whether that's linebacker, whether that's edge, whether that's quarterback, whether that's safety, you need to start somewhere and address it. So I have Dow, I have Patrick Sertan, the second going, who was a cornerback out of Alabama. I have him going to Dallas. To me, there's a lot of people that think that it's either him or Michael Parsons who could be one or the best defensive player in the draft. And I do think that it is a toss up. I will go with Michael Parsons a little more, seeing though his size and everything. But at the, at number ten, you, to me, you have to go with the best defensive player available, and because your defense was so bad, and you don't, I mean, you don't need really offensive help. Dak Prescott's coming back. You have Ezekiel Elliott. You have Amari Cooper. You have uh, C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup. Like, there's a lot of players that you have on the offense. You don't need to add a Kyle Pitts. Uh, you don't need to add an offensive weapon at, at the 10th spot. So I have Patrick Sertan going to uh, Dallas at 10. I think that he addressed an immediate need at cornerback, and he addresses – I'm not saying he's just going to clean up the defense, but he's definitely a lot he, – he's definitely – I think Dallas, their first few picks should solely focus on defense. And I think that at 10 you want to get the best player at, on, at that position. So I have Patrick Sertan the second going to Dallas. Giants, 
is another is another team that you can look at. I don't think that they need to really focus on offense right now. Espe- I, I'm not going to say don't focus on offense the entire draft, but I think at 11, you don't need to focus on offense. You still want to see what Daniel Jones does, does with a full, fully healthy Saquon Barkley. Um, you have uh, Slater. You have uh, – you just they just picked up um, – what's his name? I totally forgot the – dang, I'm, I'm drawing the blank. But you, you just picked up uh, the wide receiver from the Lions. I complete Galloway. You pick up Galloway. Like, you have pieces on the offense. Um, I, and and Darius Slayton, like, you have pieces. And so, you one thing that you need to do is, especially with Joe Judge, who's more focuses uh, as, a, you know, his focus mostly and his strength is defense. I would address the defense, and because of that, I think that you should get the best edge rusher that's in the draft at, at the 11th spot. So because of that, I will get uh, Quiddy Payne from uh, from Michigan. I think that he he f- fully he directly addresses what they need. I don't think that they need a lot. But I do think that they do, they need somebody else on the defensive side, especially at the eleventh overall pick. So I have uh, I have Kuis Kuit <laughs> Kuiti Payne. I'm sorry, going to Michigan or out of Michigan, going to the Giants at eleven. Number twelve, the Eagles. Now again, I, the Eagles. I don't really know. The Eagles is a hard a hard team to evaluate because you know they 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 trade you know. They trade away Carson Wentz to the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, so pretty much signifying that you're going to go with Jalen Hurts. But then you come out and say, you know, you want a quarterback conversation, uh, competition. You don't know if Jalen Hurts is going to be the guy. You have uh, – you're still – you still know what's going on with Zach Ertz. Your, your running back position is god-awful. Um, but I wouldn't really address running back at the 12 spot. Your wide receiver core, you mean Alshon Jeffries is kind of breaking down. Outside of that, you don't really have anybody. I, I just don't under the court. The, the the new coach is talking about rock paper scissors with draft pick. I don't I don't know what's going on with the with the Eagles, man. I, I really don't. The Eagles, I don't know. But what I will say is this: if you're going to go with Jalen Hurts, which it looks like that they sh- are, I guess, seeing as though they let their coach and their quarterback go because of that situation. I think that you want to give Jalen Hurts the most help that you can. Uh, and again, I don't think that you should address the quarter. I mean, the running back position, seeing as though that's dire as well. So I would address the quarterback. I mean, the wide receiver position. And their offensive line has been was awful last year, but it's also been probably the most injured offensive line the last few years. So I wouldn't address the offensive line right now either. I would go with the best wide receiver left. Um, Jamar Chase, I had him going to six with the Dolphins. So I have Jalen Waddle out of Alabama going to the Eagles at 12. Not only does it give uh, Jalen Hurts a number one a number one option, but a lot of people, while Devontae Smith did win, you know, the player of the year and everything, a lot of people understand that Jalen Waddle was better than Devontae Smith. It's just he got hurt. Uh, and we saw the gutsy performance that he did in the in the national championship, you know, catching a couple balls, even though he had like a broken leg or something like that. I think that this at least gives Jalen Hurts a reliable number one option, seeing as though we don't know what's going to go on with Zach Hurts and Alshon Jeffries can't stay hurt. I mean, can't stay injured. I mean, can't stay injured, can't stay healthy. And you, they don't really have anybody outside of that as far as offense. So, what, Dallas Goddard? I don't know. So, I I, I have uh, Jalen Waddle out of Alabama going 12 to the Eagles. The Chargers, I have at number 13. Well, the Chargers are at number 13. And we saw Justin Herbert, how good he was last year. I mean, he won the Offensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, he broke the, the, the rookie touchdown record. And... The Chargers is another another team that has a lot doesn't really have a lot of needs outside of the offensive line. There, even though 
Justin Herbert was good. He was running for his life a lot of times. And I think that they want to address the offensive line. I also said that this is a very deep draft for offensive offensive line. When I say deep, I'm not just saying because there's a lot of offensive linemen, but talented offensive linemen. So I have uh, Christian Christian Dar- Darasol going from out of out of Virginia Tech. I have him going 13. I think that he's a big body that can really protect uh really protect the Justin Herbert, not to mention the fact that the Chargers is a team that loves to throw the ball, whether they throw the ball to the wide receivers, whether they throw the ball to the running back, they love to throw the ball because they have a quarterback in Justin Herbert that can do that. So I have, uh, I have Christian uh, Darasol going from Alabama. I mean, ooh, from Virginia tech, I have him going 13 to uh, the Chargers. Now you have 14. Uh, you have the Vikings. Now, the Vikings, there's two positions that they really need to address. They need to address the offensive line, and they need to address the defense. Their defense was horrible last year. Now, you can also say it was due to injury, but even even fully healthy, I don't think it's, it's, it's that good. However, their defense was not as bad as their offensive line. Their offensive line was bottom five. Like, their offensive line was horrible. And because of that, I have – uh Elijah Vera Tucker out of USC going to um the Vikings. I don't think you want to address the quarterback position yet. I think that you still want to see what Kirk Cousins gives you uh and you want to protect him the best of your ability seeing as though you have Justin Jefferson, you have Kyle Rudolph, uh no, actually you don't have Kyle Rudolph. You have Adam Thielen you know, you you want this to you want that to succeed. So, I say you go with the offensive line so you protect the quarterback, and that's why I have Elijah Vera Tucker going um going to the Vikings at fourteen. Now we get to a big one. We get to the Patriots at fifteen. One thing that I've always one thing that people say that makes a lot of sense is when you're drafting for a position that's already filled, you want to draft a you want to draft a person that's not either better or draft someone that you don't need to change completely. As when I say is this, let's look at the quarterback position, right? You don't you have Cam Newton who is a big arm running mobile quarterback. You don't then draft a pocket passer. Because that means if Cam Newton goes out or if you want to make a change, you're going to completely have to change your entire offense because the offense that you run with a a mobile quarterback, you can't run with a pocket passer. That's why when you look at – I forgot the team that Joe – like when you look at – when you look at some of the quarterbacks, man, you don't want to draft a – or you don't want – case in point. Hypothetically, you have Patrick Mahomes as your starting quarterback. If he went out, you don't want a Mac Jones coming off because he's not a mobile quarterback. He is a traditional pocket passer. You want someone that can, you know, want someone that can do the same or close to the same skill set skill set as your starting quarterback. Why do I say that? The Patriots. A lot of people are saying that Cam Newton is not the future. He's just the present for the Patriots. And the pa- there is a quarterback that has fallen to the Patriots to me at 15, and that is Justin Fields. I think Justin Fields would be a perfect uh, player to draft at this position because he reminds, even though he's not the biggest, but he's a mobile quarterback, so he can do a lot of things, at least mobily, and with an arm that Cam Newton can do. He, again, you don't want to have Cam Newton. You don't want to have a Lamar Jackson, and then their backup be a pocket passer. Hell, look at look at Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's Jackson's backup is Robert Griffin the third. So, two mobile quarterbacks, two people that while he's RG three is not better than Lamar Jackson. If Lamar Jackson went out, you have a person that you don't have to completely change the offense for. I think that if. I think that if Justin Fields falls to the Patriots at 15, they will get him because you don't have to completely change the offense if Cam Newton gets hurt or if Cam Newton just doesn't work. You're going to you have a quarterback that you trust and you don't have to complete, you know, Josh McDaniels doesn't have to completely change everything for. So I have uh I have um 
I have uh, the Patriots picking uh, Justin Fields at number 15. Uh, number 16, the Cardinals. Now, the Cardinals had a big offseason, man. They had, they got uh, J.J. Watt. They got a couple pieces. And, and and one thing that still needs to be addressed, even though they did get J.J. Watt, is their defense. Their offense is pretty good. Uh, and, you know, you still have you, – you have DeAndre Hopkins. You have uh, Kyle Murray, Kyle, Kyler Murray. Like, their offense doesn't really need um, – their offense doesn't really need that much to be addressed. It's just their defense. Even with a J.J. Watt, you you do need help, especially at the cornerback position. And because of that, I have uh, Caleb Farley out of Virginia Tech going to um, going to the Cardinals. I think that his speed and his and his ability to guard and, and get to the quarterback at times, I think that that will help them, especially. Their defense has really good pieces. You have Isaiah uh, Simmons. You have J.J. Watt. You have um, some good pieces. And you did just lose Patrick Patterson. And I think that you want someone that can kind of fill in that space. I think Caleb Farley can do that. So I have Caleb Farley going 16 to the Cardinals. Oh, man. You have 17. You have the Raiders at 17. I don't understand, and I said this before in a previous episode. I don't really understand what the Raiders are doing. You you pretty much you pretty much put uh, Derek Carr on a trade block. Then you come out and say he's not getting traded. Then you say that you want to uh, f- focus on uh, protection and and protecting the quarterback. Then you uh, trade away your best offensive piece or offensive lineman. Then. You, you say that you're going to focus, but no, after you trade your best lineman, then you get can, uh, Kenyon Drake. I, I just, uh, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. But again, I, because the Raiders gave away or yeah, because the Raiders lost their best lineman, I think that they're going to go with Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma state. Again, I don't know what they're doing. I don't. Th- they don't really need a wide receiver, even though they didn't lose Nelson Aguilar. They don't really need. They need a wide receiver, but I don't think they're going to take it. Even though they could get Devontae Smith, but I think that because they lost their best lineman and they do have Josh Jacobs and now Kenyon Drake, and you want to protect uh, Derek Carr. I think you need to go with the lineman, and I think that you go with Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State. Again, I don't really know what the. I don't really know what the the Raiders are doing, but again, you have to go with the lineman if you with the pieces that they've attracted or that they've got this offseason and the people that they let go. So that's who I think they're going to take at seventeen. You got the Dolphins again at eighteen. Now the Dolphins, I said that they need to address if they're going to go with Tua. You need to give them a, a weapon, which you did at the sixth pick. I got I got them Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase to me is the best wide receiver in the, in, in the entire league. I mean, in the entire draft, and he went at six. So now at eighteen, you want to get you. You also need to while. Let me say this: while the Dolphins were the best, I think turnover ratio defense in the league. Like they had a lot of turnovers or turnover or. They had a lot of interceptions and stuff like that. Like, and I think they were the highest scoring defense in the league. I do think that they need to address the defensive line. While their cornerbacks and the safety is good, their defensive line does need work. So because of that, at 18, I have them going Christian uh, Barmore out of out of Alabama. That's a big dude. I don't know if you go look at in fact, there will be video. There'll be video of him. That's a huge dude, man. And he is a big body that can get to the quarterback. Again, I don't think you really need to address the cornerbacks right now. I don't think you really need to address the safety of this position, seeing as though you were the highest scoring defense in the league. But I do think you need to address the defensive line because while you were the highest scoring, you didn't really get to the quarterback that much. You didn't. They didn't really get a lot of sacks. That is the Denver. I mean the the um, Dolphins. So because of that, I have um, Christian Barmore going to the Dolphins at 18. At 19, you have Washington. Now, Washington, that's, that's, I'm a Washington fan. We know this. And Washington needs a lot of things. They don't really need a running back. You have Antonio Gibson, and, and they're good there. I was very tempted. 
at going court wide receiver because as we know they do need wide receiver help but i do think that getting curtis samuel uh and of course alongside um terry mclaurin i think that they're going to hold off on that i think because they went and got you know they signed tyler heineke to another to a extension and then you you bring on ryan fitzpatrick even if i don't agree with it you bring on ryan fitzpatrick i think that you're going to need to protect that and our offensive line was not good last year we do not need to focus on the defensive line we do not need to focus we do need to focus on cornerback and safety a little bit, but we don't really need to focus that fir- first round. We do need since you brought on Ryan Fitzpatrick and you brought Curtis Samuel. I think you need to address the offensive line, seeing as though it was so bad last year. And I had I have Alex Leatherwood out of Alabama, and we also know that Washington is pretty much Alabama. U. I mean, I think you're going to get Alex Weather Weatherwood. You have uh, Deron Payne. You have. Um, He's like you you have a lot of Alabama people. So at 19, I think they're going to address the offensive line, seeing as though they did bring a new quarterback in and get Alex Leatherwood out of Alabama. The Bears, same thing. You bring on uh even though you pretty much hype up the fact that you're going for uh you're going for Deshaun Watson. That didn't work. Then then you were supposed to be going for uh Russell Wilson. That didn't work. You have Alex uh, Andy Dalton. While I don't think Andy Dalton is the man to get the job done, that's who your quarterback is, and you're going to need to protect him. You don't really need to focus on the defense. Your offensive, you know, you have offensive weapons. You have David Montgomery. You have uh, Allen Robinson resigned. Like you have pieces. You just need to protect the quarterback. And like I said, this is a talent-rich offensive line draft. So because of that, I have. Wyatt Davis at Ohio State going to the Bears. I think that he's a big body that can he can really push an, an offensive line. And not only does he help protect the quarterback, but he can help get the running game back together. Now, I understand David Montgomery was hurt a lot of the year, but I do think you need to address, since you did bring on Andy Dalton, you need to you need to address the, the, the line. So I have um, Wyatt Davis going to going to the Bears. The Colts, same thing. You bring on you bring on uh, Carson Wentz, and you, you're pretty much bringing him on as he is the person to get the job done. I understand you have Quentin Nelson at the offensive line, but you want you you want to have the best offensive line. While Quentin Nelson can be the best offensive player, the Colts don't have the best offensive line. And at this point, you need to protect your asset. You traded a lot to get Carson Wentz. You want you don't really need you don't need wide receivers like that. You have Pascal, you have Pittman. You don't need tight end help like that. You don't need running back help like that. I think you need to address the line and make sure that it is as sound as possible. So I have Jalen Mayfield out of Michigan going to the Colts at not twenty one. I do think that him alongside Quentin Nelson can will definitely. Sh- I'm not gonna say sure up, but it will definitely strengthen uh, offensive line. And honestly, a lot of people think if you if Carson Wentz gets to the Carson Wentz before the injury, this could be a Super Bowl team. So you want to protect that asset, and you want you want the best offensive line possible to protect him and to protect the running game. So I have Jalen Jalen Mayfield going 21 to the Colts. The Titans. The Titans is a, is a, is 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 an interesting team. There's two like on I look, I think the Titans should address the defense. I think the Titans should uh should definitely address their cornerback and safety position cuz it just you know, you lose Malcolm Butler and it it just wasn't it wasn't great. But you did lose Corey Davis as your number one over. Your, he was pretty much your number one receiver. You do lose uh, John Deuce Smith, who was your number one on uh, tight end. I think that you need to go with the offensive and help Ryan Tannehill. While I understand that it is a majority run team because you have Derrick Henry, I do think that you need to get pieces for uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Or no, oof, Ryan Tannehill. I'm sorry, Ryan Tannehill. Uh, and, and and make sure he has the most help around him. So I have um, 
I have the Titans picking Devontae Smith at 22. I think a lot of people are looking at his weight and, and, and height and saying he's pretty small. However, he's been small his whole life. He was small in college. And I understand college and NFL is different, but he's been small his whole life. And even him being small, he won the SEC Player of the Year. He won the Naismith Player of the Year. Not Naismith. He won the uh, College Football Player of the Year. He was he won the um, the uh, national championship MVP pretty much. He he was the best player on, and I understand about Jalen Waddle getting hurt, but he was the best player on Alabama, and I think that his ability, his his quickness, and his route running makes him made him what he is today. So I think that the Titans are going to pick. Devonte Smith at 22, and I honestly think he's falling because of his stature. Because he's what six feet, 160, which is really, really skinny and small for a wide receiver. But hell, he was like that in college and still was a player of the year. So I have the Titans picking Devonte Smith um, at 22, 23. You have the Jets again. Now. Again, the Jets need a lot of help, but you just pick Zach Wilson at number two. So you're going to need to – and, and I said that that's one reason why they struggled with Sam Darnold because their offensive line was horrible. And you bring on a new quarterback in Zach Wilson, the last thing you want to do is have an uh, even more – like is your – you want you don't want to bring a new quarterback and not address your pretty much biggest weakness, which is the offensive line, because that – directly affects the quarterback. So I think at where we at? I think at twenty three you get Jackson Cameron out of Clemson. Again, you you don't bring on Zach Wilson and not address the offensive line. The offensive line is god awful. Hell, you can say what you want about Sam Darnold and if he's good or not, but one thing that you cannot deny is when Sam Darnold was playing for the Jets, he was running for his life the entire time. Uh, because their offensive line was so bad. So I have uh, Jackson Cameron going uh, 23rd to the Jets. The Steelers. The Steelers need can address a lot. They can address the edge rush. They can address the line, seeing as though they just lost. But Dupree, um, you can address another wide receiver, but you don't really need one. You have Juju. You have Claypool. So you don't really need wide receiver help. What you do need, however, is – a running back. You lose. You lose James Conner. Sneed has. He was cool, but he wasn't like they had one of the worst rushing attacks in the league. And I think that at 24, you have to go with Najee Harris out of Alabama. Najee Harris was the best running back in the league. I mean, in college football, he also can catch the ball in the backfield, and we also know how much um the Steelers love doing them hitch routes and and love doing those uh those throwing it to the flats so I just I think you really need to address that seeing as though you weren't really good at running back position before and then you lose your best running back in James Conner so I think that uh I think that you're going to uh I think you 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 go with Najee Harris at 24 with for the Steelers 25, you have the Jaguars. The Jaguars are a little different. Um, their offensive line is not good, but you I don't think you I think you need to address your two biggest weaknesses. You address the first one, the first overall pick, you get Trevor Lawrence. Their second biggest weakness is their defense. Like their defense was horrible. And I don't think you need a running back. You have chalk and you have those plays. I don't think you really need a running back or a wide receiver. I think that you need to get a cornerback. And because of that, I have Asante Samuel Jr. out of Florida State going to the Jaguars. I think that at this at this spot, he is the best cornerback that's left. And you 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 have a big name player in Trevor Lawrence on the offense. I think you need to get a big name player on the defense as well. So I have Asante Samuel Jr. going uh to the Jaguars at 25. 26 with the Browns. This is an odd situation for the Browns, man. The Browns don't really need much. Uh, you know, they are on paper. Their roster is stacked. They have a Super Bowl caliber roster. You have you have uh Baker Mayfield, you have Derek, I mean Chubb, you have Odell Beckham Jr., you have Jarvis Landry, you have Jadavion Clowney, you have Miles Garrett, you have Ninjaku. Like you have so many players. This team is deep. 
The only position I can really see they need help on, they addressed uh, in the in the off season. So this is much. This team, along with one other team, is really drafting for depth. So I think that you should go with Trayvon Mo. Mohirig, I I know I said your name wrong. My fault, bro. The safety out of tennis, uh, TCU. I think that he will help them because one thing that we did see is while their defense does need a little, I mean their defense is good. They do they they do have positions that need to be filled, and they do have positions that um can break down. Hell, I I remember the when they played the Ravens. And Lamar Jackson, you know, the whole to- the the cramps game or whatever you want to call it. And Lamar Jackson was hitting people deep, like hitting Hollywood Brown deep. So I think that, you know, the, a cornerback, maybe a, another. No, I don't think you need an edge rush. A cornerback, maybe a linebacker or a safety. So I think you should go with Trayvon Moharig. I know I said your name. I apologize, bro. A safety out of TCU. I have him going to the Browns at 26. The Ravens are in a, are in a, are in a, are, are in a good position. You know, you trade even though you trade Orlando Brown uh, to the Chiefs, you get you have two picks in this draft, and I think that you need to. And this is this is at twenty seven. You need to address. Uh, you lost. Um, what's his name? You lost John, uh, Judon Matthew Judon. You love. You lost. Uh, of course. Right, right, offensive line. You lost Brown, and then uh, the Dom, uh, and the, I forgot his name, bro. You need to address the linebacker position and the in the in the wide receiver position, and I think at twenty seven you should go with the linebacker. To me, you have one of the best linebackers still available in Javin Collins out of T- Tulsa. I think that you need to one address Matthew Judon's position. Because he's especially how uh, how the um, the Ravens like to to play. It's a defensive first, and then of course a run team, even with Lamar Jackson. So I think that uh, at twenty seven you get Javin Javin Collins out of Tulsa. I think that he definitely addresses a, a hole that needs to be filled. At twenty eight you have the Saints. Here's the thing. You don't draft a quarterback because I don't think there's a quarterback at this position. I don't think there's a court. I don't think you really draft him for the future because if Jameis Winston's the future, he's still young. If Taysom Hill's the future, he's still young. You don't really need offensive weapons. I mean, you have Alvin Kamara, you have Michael Thomas, you have those players. Uh, I think that you need to address the cornerback position, and because of that, I have Jace Horn out of South Carolina. I think that. Um, I think. You know, you can't you can't depend on Eli White, bro. You just can't. He's not good. And you can't I mean, you know, you still have Lattimore and while the defense is good, I do think, you know, you need to address there is there are still holes. And I think that Jace Horn addresses though some of those holes. So I take J I'll take Jace Horn if I was the Saints at twenty eight. At twenty nine, the Packers Here's the thing. A lot of people say just go quarterback. I mean, go go uh, wide receiver, go wide receiver. But I think that because Aaron Rodgers is so good, you know, Lazard, you can he can be a number two. Um, Valdez Scantling, is that his name? Yeah, Valdez Scantling, he can be a number two. And of course, you get Aaron Jones, so you don't really need to address the the running back position. One thing that they do, and this is. We saw this in the playoffs, man. They need to address the cornerback position, even though you can sign King or whatever. He, you know, they need to address that, and they also need to address the defensive line. And at this spot, I think Davion Nixon would be the best player for them, the defensive lineman out of Iowa. I think that one thing that we saw is the the Smith brothers. They're cool, but they can be on and off in. Their defense can be on it. They can't. They couldn't stop the run to save their lives. And I think Davion Nixon will definitely help that in that in that spot. So I have the Packers at twenty nine picking Dave uh, Davion Nixon. The Bills. The Bills. You have Josh Allen. You got you know. You you kind of address the the running position with with uh, in the off season, but. Even though they're def- even though they were a really good team, they made it all the way to the AFC Championship. Um, 
your their cornerback position, they weren't good defensively, honestly. And you need to address the the defensive position in this draft. So I think that at thirty, you have to get uh, Tyson no Tyson Campbell out of Georgia. I think that you know you don't really need much because Josh Allen has been so good. And the I mean, you have Stephon Diggs. You don't really need to address the offense. Even though I think later in the draft, maybe the second round, if they can find a way to get a Travis T a uh, Travis Etienne, if they can find a way to get a running back, it'll definitely be good. But I think that you need to address the cornerback position, and I think uh, Tyson Campbell would be a good pick for the Bills at this position. The Ravens again, like I said, because you trade, you draft or traded Orlando Brown to the Chiefs, you get the pick. I address the the uh, Matthew Judon. I address that position. Now you need to address the wide receiver position. It's I understand. I, I, you need to address the wide receiver position. And because of that, I have Rondé Moore out of Purdue. I think that he, you know, we a lot goes to Jalen Waddle, a lot goes to Devontae Smith, a lot goes to uh, Jamar Chase, and rightfully so. But outside of those three, you don't really hear much about the wide receiver, even though this is a deep wide receiver uh, draft. I think outside of the three, I think Rondé, Rondé Moore is is the is probably the best remaining and. Again, we can't I don't I think the Ravens ceiling is however like if they don't if they don't develop a, a passing game, it's not gonna work. And you know, you can you can sign whoever if you don't have I mean if 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 Hollywood Brown, I think they got what, Sammy Watkins, who isn't really a number one due to injuries and stuff like that, it just it's not going to work. So I think that you need a, I think you need another wide receiver that can just give Lamar Jackson another weapon. So I have Rondé Moore out of Purdue going to the Ravens at 31. And lastly, I have Tampa Bay at 32. This is yet another team like the Browns. They really don't need much, man. They don't need I mean, you brought back 22 starters. Your defense is solid. You just won a Super Bowl. You're pretty. You are probably the most talented team in the league, outside of I mean, arguably the Chiefs. But you don't. They don't need anything. So they're 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 literally drafting on the future, and because of that, while Tom Brady is still the you know top tier quarterback, just won a Super Bowl. Uh, you you. I mean, he's still what forty something years old. You you don't you don't know how long you're gonna get him. And I said before that looking down the road, this, there's there's not going to be a lot of good draft picks at the quarterback position. And I think that Tampa Bay should draft uh, Kellen Moore out of Texas A&M. I think that out of the you know the the big five or the big four, or whatever, he's one of the he's probably the next best quarterback, and he is better than a lot of quarterbacks that we see coming down the road. Like I don't I don't know who would be good for I don't I don't know who they'd get um so I, I think that you don't really need any position to be filled at Tampa Bay at least in the immediate future so I think you should just go with Kellen 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 Mond uh, out of Texas A&M I just I, I just think that's you know I think it's what you do and that's that's just, that's been this week's episode of the Unpopular Podcast, man. Um, I appreciate it. If you guys don't agree on a, you know, I, first of all, let me know who you think is going to be drafted by your favorite team. I mean, who who do you think is going to go between Mac Jones and maybe Trey Lance for the 49ers? What do you think about the draft? Who do you have? Where do you have Justin Fields going? I want to talk to you guys in the comments, man. If you don't agree with one of my picks. If you don't agree with any of my picks, leave it and we'll talk about it. But that is when that has been my the unpopular podcast mock draft. Um, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Please do me a favor and subscribe to the YouTube. Subscribe to the to yeah, subscribe to the YouTube, man. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, man, by by my birthday. Uh, if you like, if you want an unpopular podcast shirt, if you want a popular podcast hoodie. Long sleeve. I know it's about to get hot, so get you a t-shirt. It got joggers for the, you know, whatever you want. The link is in the description below. I got you. I got you. But again, that's my mock draft. If you don't agree, leave it in the comments. We'll talk about it. I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. I'm excited about this draft tomorrow. And yeah, man, until next time, much love.